So to learn how to do custom assemblies in SSIS, first thing we need is a DLL. I have gone and I've downloaded the C Sharp Express Edition and the Visual Basic Express Edition and I've installed them already on my system. I did this because not everybody is going to put out the several dollars that it takes to get the developer edition or rather the pro edition or the standard edition of Visual Studio. If you have those, great. It's no different from our standpoint here in SSIS. The only difference really is that you can create one solution that has multiple projects and you can reference those. Um, if you are just kind of playing around and want to see how all of this works, you could just straight up go to a search engine, look for C Sharp Express Edition and Visual Basic Express Edition. You do not need the Visual Web Developer. I actually downloaded that and installed it by mistake. I thought I was doing the VB one. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. Um, we'll choose one of our languages. What do we do here? Okay, so I've got a guitar pick here and heads. I uh, was got the lettering, and it'll be C sharp, and tails will be VB, and it's heads. So we'll do C sharp. Uh, so let's just grab it, and it doesn't matter. Uh, the screen is the same. You go to make a new class library. Uh, if we did this in Visual Basic, uh, it's the same thing. Launch it up, file, new project, and it's class library. Okay, so you could see down here that it says you're creating a DLL, which more run around, which we really know it's going to be an assembly. Okay, so let's make a class library. I'm going to give it a name of Scott's DLL. Uh, the name that I gave it in turn becomes the project name over here. And you can see, oh, it's a little small. Um, you could, let me do this. Let's see, let's make the fonts a little bigger. Is that readable? I mean, I think I can make it bigger. I always despise it when I watch a video or see something and I can't read the what the person is telling me about. Uh, I don't need all those basic imports here. So notice that we have the namespace Scott's DLL. Let's give us a class called my class. And you, know, you could have anything that you need to in here. You could make it as complex as many files as you want to. I'm just going to return, um, you know, we might use a input value. We might use this to do some sort of a calculation. So all we'll do is return the value times 10. Okay, so you pass in a value, we'll, we'll multiply it times 10 and our awesome assembly. You'd probably make it a little more real world, right? But you'll get the idea of how to actually do this, okay? Now, practice would probably tell me to make this the same name as the class, so I named it my class. So we still haven't gotten to steps one through five yet, right? So I need to come over here to the properties of the project, and I'm going to go ahead and do step number one. So we're going to create our assembly. It's going to be named Scott's DLL dot DLL. Um, underneath our build event over here, this is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put the, uh, this is just in the project folder here. And the very bottom part down here is the ability to sign. Okay, this is what we need to do. This is step one. Step one, we have to sign the assembly using a strong name key, right? This is we have the choice. Do we already have an SNK file? A dot SNK is a strong name key. We don't. We need to make a new one. So let's make a new strong name key file. We'll give this file the name um, our secret code. And we'll put in our super secret password. And you can see that it's taken it and put it over here. So we have our strong name key with the password here. Um, we're cool. 
we now need to go ahead and do step number two. So step one, let's just put our words down here. Step one, sign the DLL. Give it a strong name key. We've done that. Step number two is to build the DLL. So step two, build the DLL slash assembly. And we saw up here in the build where it was going to put it. So we just go to build. Now this is building the whole solution. A solution contains one or more projects. This only has one project. We could just build this project by right clicking on it. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and build. Okay, so we've done steps one and two. Let's go now actually find it. Do you remember where this was created? Probably not. Well, you can kind of figure it out if you weren't sure by pretending you'll create a new project. Because if you pretend, we'll save, then it shows you where it's putting it. So I can go into that particular location. So I say copy and we can safely close out of here. We've done everything in C Sharp or in Visual Basic that, or in Visual Studio that we need to do. We've signed it and we've built it. Now let's go see where it was. It was, let's just pull up my computer and paste. It was right here. And you can see I've got a bunch of junk stuff in here that I can clean out safely from previous videos, I guess. So there's Scott's DLL. Uh, there's the solution file. Uh, under here, remember, it was BIN slash release. And when we take a look, there's our DLL. Now, you do not need to deploy the PDB file. These are going to be the debug symbols if you're debugging this. We are not. We don't need to test it. We're, we're cool. We're going to just go ahead and take that DLL. So step one, sign. Step two, build. Step three, deploy to the SSIS folder. Let me show you where the SSIS folder is. So here's what you do. You're going to deploy it. Literally, you are going to copy and paste. This must be done on your machine here that you're working with this SSIS in a development environment. So come over here. Where did you install the program files for your SQL Server? Program files, Microsoft SQL Server. What version are we on? I'm on 100 in this one, SQL Server 2008. Come down here, we need to go to DTS. And underneath the DTS, this is where we have to kind of put all of our stuff down here. So literally, all you have to do is copy and paste this to the right location. The trick is, what is the right location? Not quite obvious. So uh, it's actually weird. It's better today than it was. So we copy. And now you have to be able to answer the question, where did you install your SQL Server program files? Okay, so I did the default installation when I set up this computer, and that means that it put them in the C program files and the Microsoft SQL Server folder. I know that I'm on version 10.0, which is 100 here. And so this is the location that you have to figure out on your production server versus your uh, development environment, whatever. Um, it's in the SDK folder is a folder called assemblies because this is where you have to put it. So I'm going to uh, zoom in right here so that you can see the way that I think about it is using an environment variable thing, you know, program files. Um, that would be like a batch variable uh, or allowing us to use an environment variable program files. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server 100 SDK and then once I get to SDK I can remember assemblies that, that's pretty logical to me but it's this part for whatever reason that I always have a good bit of trouble with now in 2005 it was a little more difficult because you actually had to copy you had to deploy the assembly to the .NET framework folder and that was just um, that was confusing here. So this is what you need to know. So whatever your program files folder, then go down and change that. 
So did I copy it into my buffer or not? Okay, I put it there. Sweet. We've done now step number three. We signed, we built, we deployed, and now we need to install. Now, i tell you what we're going to do. We're about at the 10 minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Let's come back in the next video. We'll do steps numbers four and five, and then we'll deploy it and, or put it into an SSIS package, and I'll show you how to use it.